we are in module 2 discussing transformation or mapping our function w equal to f of z. We know that the function w equal to f of z is a rule which associates each z taken from the domain to unique w in the codomain. Let us see a geometrical representation of this. We know that z is made up of two variables x and y, w is made up of another two variables u and v, which means w is made up of four variables x, y, u and v. To represent this function, we need four dimensional region. As a result, we can't put it on paper. So we are using two planes to represent the function w equal to f of z. Now we will represent the values of z in one plane called the z plane and we are going to represent the values of w in another plane called the w plane. Suppose if I consider one curve c in the z plane, our transformation w equal to f of z transforms this curve c into c dash in w plane. That is, so this curve c is made up of what? This curve c is made up of set of points which lies on this curve c. So consider each point z from this, put it here, find the corresponding value of w and just plot those points here. And afterwards just join those points to have the corresponding curve c dash in w plane. Which means we are supposed to represent the z values in one plane called the z plane and we are supposed to represent w values in another plane called the w plane. So this is how we represent any complex function w equal to f of z geometrically. Once if it is done, we can talk about the one concept which we are supposed to discuss in our syllabus which is conformal transformation. Now have a look at this figure. We are considering two curves c1 and c2 which are intersecting at the point P. Now we are supposed to measure the angle between these two curves c1 and c2. I have measured here, I am just taking it as alpha. To measure the angle, I have just drawn the tangents to these two curves at the point of intersection. Now with the transformation w equal to f of z, I got these two curves c1 dash and c2 dash which are intersecting at the point p dash. Now I have measured the angle between these two curves just by drawing the tangents to these two curves at the point of intersection and I am maintaining the same direction as what we used here. So it is not a compulsion like we have to measure the angle in anti-clockwise direction, it is left to us. but if we are supposed to measure both in anti-clockwise direction or both in clockwise direction. When we do this, if the magnitude of this angle remains same, we claim the transformation w equal to f of z is conformal. That is, angle of intersection of the curves at the point P is same as angle of intersection of the curve at point P dash, both in magnitude and sense. Here sense corresponds to the direction. So that is fine with respect to the conformal transformation. Now, so can we determine this mathematically? Yes, it is possible. If you can show the function w equal to f of z is analytic, then it is called conformal transformation at every point where f dash of z is not equal to 0. Okay, let me try to understand this through these three transformation e power z z square z plus 1 by z. In our syllabus, we are supposed to discuss these three transformations. Now, if I consider e power z, its derivative is not equal to 0 for all z and since it is analytic, this is conformal everywhere in the complex plane. If you come to this one, z square, its derivative is 2z which is not equal to 0 for all z except the point z equal to 0 which means z square is conformal everywhere except the point z equal to 0. If we come to third case, z plus 1 by z, its derivative is 1 minus 1 by z square, which is not equal to 0 for all z, except the point z equal to plus 1 and minus 1. So, this transformation is conformal everywhere, except, those, except the points plus 1, minus 1 and 0 at which this function ceases to be analytic. Now, let me discuss the transformation w equal to e power z. In the exam, the question will be like this. Discuss the transformation w equal to e power z or z square or z plus 1 by z. If any one of this question is asked, so let us first try to understand how w equal to e power z is handled. Now, to discuss the transformation, 
begin with taking z and w values that will take z equal to x plus i y w is u plus i v but this or w equal to e power z becomes u plus i v equal to e power x plus i y we know that e power i y is cos y plus i sin y so real part is e power x cos y and imaginary part is e power x sin y now we are going to consider two simple curves in z plane just to understand how the transformation works let me consider x equal to c1 our next curve will be y equal to c1 constant c2 for me now for x equal to c1 what does it represent it represents a straight line parallel to y axis with this our equation 1 becomes e power c1 cos y and v equal to e power c1 sin y now i am supposed to get a curve which is free from y and it should made up of only u and v because i am supposed to plot a curve in w plane which is made up of only u and v so to eliminate y from these two equations if we observe it carefully if i square and add them we will get e power c1 square multiplied to cos square y plus sin square y because e power c1 whole square is common here so cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1 as a result we are going to get this expression we can note that x and u will play the same role because these two are the real axis y and v play the same role because they are the imaginary axis now this is x square plus y square equal to some constant square which represents what a circle with center and origin and the radius here units which means in w plane this equation represents a circle with center at origin and the radius e power c1 units you can note that even if you take the c1 is a negative number which means instead of considering x equal to c1 in the positive side even if you consider the negative side you can note this is still e power c1 whole square only so as a result we can note that this always represents a circle with center at origin and the radius a units which means the family of straight lines parallel to y axis are transformed to family of concentric circles with center at origin in the w plane now let me consider one more case y equal to c2 this represents a straight line parallel to x axis with respect to this u equal to e power x cos c2 v equal to e power x sin c2 you can easily eliminate e power x from these two equations dividing one equation by the other equation now v equal to tan c2 into u so this is quite similar to your y equal to mx y equal to m into x tan c2 is a constant which means it is a straight line passing through the origin okay so since even in this example c2 may be a positive number or negative number your this still remains v constant into u only so which means the straight lines parallel to x axis are transformed to what the straight lines which are passing through origin family of straight lines passes through origin in w plane now let me try to understand let me just put all these diagrams together to write this so this is x equal to c1 this is what i spoke about x equal to positive number and this represents x equal to negative number and this represents y equal to negative number and this represents y equal to positive number with that these two will be transformed to these two concentric circles and these two lines are transformed to these two straight lines which are passing through origin and you can note that if i just measure the angle between these two curves at this point it is 90 degree even here the ang measure, angle between these two is 90 degrees which confirms the conformal transformation of conformality of conformal transformation of w equal to e power z at the same time we can also claim one more thing that conformal transformation always transforms orthogonal curves into orthogonal curves now this is enough from the uh, even from the point of examination now let me discuss w equal to z square if this is our question so just like the previous case i can take z equal to x plus i y w equal to u plus i v i am supposed to use a plus b whole square formula here 
to have x square here i square becomes minus 1 and as a result this is my real part u and this is the imaginary part v now just like the previous example here also we are going to consider two simple curves in z plane we are going to see what we what happens in w plane consider x equal to c1 again it represents a straight line parallel to y axis we know this already substituting this in these two equations we get these two these two contains y we need to y, eliminate y from these two equations see to eliminate y from these two equations you can go for all the five possible operation one is addition second one is subtraction third one is multiplication fifth one is division or you can go for substitution go for any of these five operations one other thing is we need an equation which is free from y so right now what i will do now so this will be very simple if i just square this one because i will get y square from this expression so i'm going to square this expression to have v square equal to 2c1 whole square y square and y square is nothing but c1 square minus u put it in standard form by taking negative sign common here this gives minus 4c1 square times u minus c1 square and observe it carefully can you recognize this yes it is y minus k whole square equal to minus 4a times x minus h this is in this form here k value is 0 h value is c1 square and this represents a parabola with negative u axis as its axis and you can note that the vertex lies on c1 square comma 0 which is positive u axis which means that the straight lines parallel to y axis are transformed to parabolas with negative u axis as their axis and their vertices lies on positive u axis you can note that it remains the same even for the negative value of c1 it doesn't make any difference for us because you are squaring the c1 and as a result for every straight line pa parallel to y axis are transformed to parabolas with negative u axis as their axis and their vertices lies on positive u axis similarly if i consider y equal to c2 it represents a straight line parallel to x axis and with a similar operation you can note square this one and substitute the value of x square from here this gives 4 c2 square x square is u plus c2 square and this is similar to y minus a k whole square equal to 4a times x minus h this is once again a parabola here h value is minus c2 square and k value is 0 which means it represents parabola once again with positive u axis as its axis and its vertex lies on negative u axis and it is true for every y for every y equal to c2 which means the family of straight lines parallel to x axis are transformed to family of parabolas with their axis is positive u axis and vertex is lies on negative u axis this is fine with respect to w equal to z square let me try to understand the next transformation z plus 1 by z here i am going to consider z equal to r e power i theta and w equal to u plus i v with this r e power i theta plus 1 by r e power i theta becomes r times cos theta plus i sin theta 1 by e power i theta is e power minus i theta which is cos theta minus i sin theta so with this this becomes r plus 1 by r r cos theta plus 1 by r cos theta this is i sin theta multiplied to r and here minus i sin theta multiplied to 1 by r that gives i times r minus 1 by r sin theta now the real part is r plus 1 by r cos theta imaginary part is r minus 1 by r sin theta so just like the previous two cases here also consider simple curve r equals to constant and theta equal to constant r equal to constant represents a circle with center at origin and the radius c1 units how let me try to understand this here you can note that i am just fixing the value of r theta is not a constant here so r equal to constant represents what does r represents basically r represents the distance of the 
point desired from the center from the origin distance of r from the origin which means mod z equal to r equal to c1 sorry r equal to c1 represents set of all points which are at the distance c1 from the origin which means r equal to c1 represents circle with center at origin and the radius c1 units is this fine let me repeat it again have a look at this one r equal to c1 represents the value of z at the distance r from the origin since you are fixing the value of r here c1 it represents since theta is not fixed here r equal to c1 represents set of all those points which are at the distance c1 which are at the distance c1 from the origin which means r equal to c1 represents a circle with center at origin and the radius c1 units now if i substitute these two things in these two expressions we will get expression like this but i have got cos theta and sin theta here if cos theta and sin theta comes into the picture or my idea is always to have cos square theta plus sin square theta to have it is equal to 1 so for that i'm just taking this constant to the denominator and i'm just squaring and adding these two equation to have this expression cos square theta plus sin square theta becomes 1 and if you just observe this carefully, it looks exactly similar to x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1, which represents ellipse. So, circle in a z plane is transformed to ellipse in the w plane. So, similarly, if I consider theta equal to c2, we are not fixing the value of r, only theta value is fixed, which means that that represents what? A radial line which passes through the origin. And for this one, our equation 1 and equation 2 becomes like this. Just like the previous case, take cos theta and sin c2 to the left hand side. Now, square them and take the difference. That gives this expression here a plus b whole square plus a minus b whole square here. So that gives this expression here r square minus r square cancels. 1 by r square minus 1 by r square cancels. 2 r by 1 by r becomes 2 minus into minus plus r by 1 by r cancels. This is also 2 plus 2 plus 2 that becomes plus 4. Take this 4 to the left hand side by cross multiplication. This becomes u square by 2 cos c2 whole square minus v square by 2 sin c2 whole square, which is equal to 1, which is exactly similar to x square by a square minus y square by b square is equal to 1, which represents hyperbola. So, which means the radial lines in the z plane are transformed to hyperbola in the w plane. So this is fine with w equal to z plus 1 by z. So there is enough you want from the point of your examination. If you have any doubts, so please come back 